Man, oh man, the Detroit Red Wings just did that. What was that? My goodness. Okay, I'm going to be honest here. I did not watch the entirety of this game from start to finish between the Red Wings and the Columbus Blue Jackets. I missed out on the first, and I missed out on parts of the third. I'll tell you my story as to what happened today, because it kind of plays into my emotional response to the Red Wings beating the Columbus Blue Jackets 4-3 in overtime. Because heading into this game, I was saying, look, we've made our few negative Nancy videos about the Red Wings. It's been a blast, you know, just seeing the fan response. Everybody's getting involved. Everybody's concerned. Everybody's kind of putting their minds towards this one thing. And I think there's a beauty in being able to cultivate a community to do that. But I was kind of saying, you know... Hey, the Wings are not in the playoffs anymore. Washington beat Calgary yesterday, so now they're in that final wild card. The Wings are clinging on to dear life based off of how they've been playing the past few weeks and what's been going on elsewhere in the NHL. And they're playing off against Columbus today. They need to go out there and win this game. I didn't watch the first. I was doing prep work for tomorrow's videos and just doing some extra stuff. So when I saw the notifications pop up on my phone, okay, the Columbus Blue Jackets took a quick 1-0 lead. Oh boy, that's not good. Oh no, Zach Wierenski got a goal five minutes into the first period. Not great. And then Alexandra Texier, eight minutes later, makes it 2 nothing. I was kind of like, okay, it's Columbus. I'm not watching the game right now, but I believe in the Red Wings. They're good enough to beat the Columbus Blue Jackets from down to nothing, right? And then at the end of the first period, I wrapped up my work. I decided to tune into the game, see what was going on, take a look at what Motown hockey was looking like on this Tuesday evening. I turned on the stream, and on the ESPN period breakdown list they had, they showed that the Blue Jackets were leading in shots 20 to 6. The Red Wings only had six shots on goal in the first and 20 against James Reimer. Oh my gosh. I don't care that he let in two goals that you could debate whether or not he should have saved. The guy had four breakaways against in the first period. Detroit, what are you doing? You're throwing. The Red Wings are done. After that first period, I reviewed some of the game tape. I looked at the analytics. I was like, dude, this team is cooked. They're not going to be able to force themselves into a playoff position, let alone maybe even winning this game if they're going to be allowing three and a half shots every time they take one of their own. You can't be down 20 to 6 to the Blue Jackets and shots on goal in the first period of a game. That's just not it. And the best part about that is, I feel like there might have been some magic going on in this situation because I responded in the way that I did to that first period. The Wings fans all over social media responded in the ways that they did. Pretty similar to how I responded. Unacceptable, right, from the Red Wings? The fans in the building had the same response, and it seems like somebody in the Red Wings coaching staff, whether it be Derek Lalonde or somebody else, they said the same thing. Because heading into the second period, my oh my, did the Detroit Red Wings look like a completely different team. They showed off that they actually still had what it takes to compete in a hockey game. They got two goals to tie things up at the end of the second. Lucas Raymond, Moritz Sider, getting themselves on the board. So there you go. That's all you need to see. Lucas Raymond, by the way, one of the only guys that's actually been good in this entire stretch of play where the Wings have been losing all these games. And then you have Mo Sider finally getting himself his eighth goal on the year. That's a career high. He kind of needed that, to be honest. I get it. It wasn't the most clean as a whistle shot. It deflected off of the Blue Jackets guy in front. But still, Mo Sider has kind of been on the receiving end of the brunt end of the stick when it comes to Red Wings criticism and players that are not really living up to their expectations. He's been played a lot, so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But then in the third period, things got pretty interesting. Because I missed out in the third period. I ended up going to the gym. I wasn't able to watch the majority of this frame. I saw my notifications on the phone. Okay, Kira Marchenko got a power play goal to give the Blue Jackets a 3-2 lead. That's not ideal, but then again, you know, some of these Russian players on Columbus... Once they get hot, you know, they're pretty good, and Marchenko has an absolute laser of a wrist shot from that area near the faceoff circle. No wonder he's got 18 on the year. 
but it's 3-2 Columbus for the remainder of the third period, and by the time I got home and I turned everything back on, I was like, okay, the Wings are down 3-2, they've got the empty net, they're not going to come back and win this, because why would they? We're going to make another negative Nancy video about Detroit, because hey, that's just the inevitability at this point, they had a good second period, but that's about it, and with 20 seconds to go, I turned on my stream once again. And I saw the Red Wings win an offensive zone faceoff. The puck goes back over to Goss to spare. He tosses it over to the right side to Patrick Kane, who throws it on goal. And in front, it's Lucas Raymond, who bats it in. It's a tie game, Detroit. 3-3 with 13 seconds to go. Lucas Raymond, on the rebound, is able to send the wings to overtime. Man, give that guy his money. I will never stop saying that that man deserves every single dollar that the Red Wings have available to him, to everybody else, to the staff, to the media, to the fans, the concession. Every single dollar accrued by the Red Wings organization needs to be given to Lucas Raymond because that guy, oh my goodness, that guy. Talk about the clutch factor. Talk about being one of the only guys that shows up when the team is in need factor. Patrick Kane with his second assist on the night as well. And in overtime, he delivers the dagger. Assisted by Debrinket and Mo Sider. Is that a 5v5 point? I'm not too sure. It's technically 3 on 3, but the Red Wings, all it takes is 40 seconds into the extra frame for... Mo Sider to toss it over to Debrinket. He tosses it over to Kane, who comes right in, short side, and he snipes it! 4-3 overtime win! The Red Wings get themselves back in the dub column and back into the playoffs! They overtake the Caps in that wildcard race, and I get it, you know. Games in hand, games remaining, the Capitals are hot, Ovechkin scoring goals, things are great in Washington. But guess what? That team didn't even expect to make the playoffs. They sold away all their good players at the deadline. They traded away Kuznetsov, traded away Edmondson, and now they're in the postseason? Like, come on. That final wildcard spot is kind of Russian roulette at this point. But when it comes to the Red Wings, they have overtaken Washington for that spot once more in one of the craziest games we have seen all year as a member of the Red Wings fan base. This was crazy for so many reasons. One, hey, multi-goal comeback. That's nuts, right? 2-0, 2-2, and then the game-tying goal to make it 3-3 gets scored with 13 seconds to go. That's nuts already. And then you have the team that was down 20-6 to in shots in the first period and 2-0 in the score in the game end up winning this one in a comeback in overtime. Thank you, James Reimer. But you also have all the context involved that this was against the Columbus Blue Jackets. How did you go down? Okay, let's not dwell on the first period. The Red Wings won. That's all that matters, right? Detroit ends up taking Columbus to the wire. They struggle along the way, but they end up choking the Blue Jackets out and taking the dub. They needed this. If they had lost this game, it would have been over. Like, if they had played the second and the third period in the same way they played the first, it would have been completely over. The season would have been done. All the more reason to burn it to the ground. Derek Lawn's fired tomorrow, etc., etc. But now, at the very least, we have a few more days worth of Derek Lalonde coached Red Wings hockey because of this comeback. We knew they had it in them. We did, especially against a team like Columbus. But man, you never know with Detroit nowadays, right? Talk about the priority curse? I'm not too sure. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Detroit Red Wings defeating the Columbus Blue Jackets 4-3 in overtime. Let me know your thoughts about the 2-0 deficit in the first. What are your thoughts about the breakaways? What are your thoughts about Simon Edvinson? He played today. We didn't even talk about that in the entire video. There were moments that I saw a lot of Red Wings fans talking about in the first period where Edvinson had some pretty good passes, but the guys that he was passing to just did not end up receiving the puck or did not even notice that the puck was coming to them. Yeah. Simone Edvinson's hockey brain seems to be a bit too big for the Red Wings personnel at the moment, but we'll see what happens as the year goes on. Thoughts in the comment section below, though, of the Wings retaking that final wildcard spot so far from Washington. I hope you enjoyed this video. Charles 99. And bye.